Hello everyone, this here is the LEGO Star Wars Ultimate Collector Series Venator. Finally, another decent size, and this is quite a decent size, 43 inch, 109 centimeters long, OG Star Destroyer from the prequel era. I paid $650 US for this, so it better be good. Came with 5,000 374 pieces. I did put all of this together live with the wonderful community over on Twitch. I very strongly, highly recommend that you join us over there for some, some chill times, some silly times, some good times putting together Lego and occasionally some other types of plastic models. You see that this is a, an OG Star Destroyer, a Venator. You see that it's big, but there's got to be more to it than just that. As usual, this comes with a display plaque and it also has two minifigures that are included and we'll look at those later. Of course, I wanna focus on the main thing that you're paying for here, the main build. What can I say about this, honestly, that you haven't heard yet? Let me give you a focus on my opinions here. First of all, this is purely a display model with absolutely no play features whatsoever and that includes the number one thing that people ask about, the hangar bay doors. These do not open. This is pretty much static. You can change the orientations of the turbo lasers here, but that's just about it. This is all about the build experience to get to this point and then being able to just look at it and just enjoy it like this. I personally can enjoy it very much just like this because it looks fantastic to me. Now I am a little bit biased because I do generally like the 1970s style of Greeble monster capital ship. But hey, on top of that, the Lego design team did an excellent job in my opinion on the Greebles on this monster, especially down this center section from the side, the whole waistline there, the whole belt, if you will, which has the highest concentration of surface detail on it. And you see very few gaps. I'm gonna put a fair bit of focus on the lack of gaps in this. The side section here that I'm focusing on first, just because again, it has the most detail, is done in a number of sections. The largest section is a sub-assembly that you do is right here where things pinch in and you have the side hangar bay. It's multiple parts uh, that are, are hinged in and out and they all again just fit perfectly into their space. Where you do have gaps you mostly have shadows so you're just seeing dark areas. It doesn't feel like things are fitting together poorly. There's a tiny bit of gap right there but from most angles you don't see that. That is intended to be I believe a a micro scale model of an assault uh, a gunship, but you could also see it as a new class uh, Republic attack shuttle from its shape. Yeah, just look at this. It's very satisfying to look at up close. And frankly, that's why I'm here. It's a big geometric maze of, of simple shapes with some really fine details on the top. And that's what's satisfying to me. Back here, the engines, big old things. You know, a couple of them are really big. A couple of them are really small. The focus here is on the dark pearl gray color or the gunmetal gray color, which looks glorious in person. I've heard a lot of concerns about uh, troop back here about the engines falling down. Everybody's constantly talking about the sag with the engines. But in fact, the longest engine segment, which is this one right here, has a hanger. So right back there, it's connected on the other side to the main fuselage, to, to the main center hull to prevent it from sagging too far. And this second largest one out here is actually resting partially on the under plate. So they don't go as far as you think. However, this section of hull back here tapers in, which gives you an optical illusion that makes it look like these are sagging way more than they are. This one is about that far down. This one's about that far down. And the worst culprit is right here. And again, it should be about there. It's actually falling down to there, where again, it's stopped. It can't go any farther. It's actually resting down below. Frankly, for me though, I like the finer details around the sides. This area back here with the engines is the most satisfying to look at from a distance. There is a reliance on very large stickers, unfortunately, on either side right here at the aftmost portion of the ship, but these don't look bad to me and weren't particularly difficult to apply. 
And that's in contrast to these four six by six tiles right in the middle top of the hull, where it's really, really obvious that they are completely covered by stickers and they are surrounded by only light gray each, which highlights just how different the gray color itself is of the stickers compared to the plastic. These definitely could have been done as prints for this very expensive high-end collector's model, especially when you have different levels of quality from one factory to another and the factories that's that supply north america in particular are the worst and you end up having not only differences in color but also like here you can see there's some banding there's a there's a darker strip right here and then there's a lighter strip next to it and that is for both of these here just the quality just didn't come out the way that it should for something of this cost Thank goodness one thing that LEGO has improved on quality wise in recent years is consistency in the dark red. Most pieces now are close enough, at least in the past year or so, have been close enough to one another that it's not an issue to me anymore. Dark red had been really, really bad. There's still a couple of parts that are in a different material that are noticeably different to a tiny degree, but just generally that situation has been improved a lot. I like the design of this superstructure and it was also very enjoyable to put together when everything just fits, you know, these, these major sub assemblies that go together with building in different directions. The single most satisfying thing here for me was the inclusion of a couple of these, uh, what is it, three by four container pieces. There's one, you can just see the side of it here that's just used for a little bit of different surface texture there on the side. It's just really enjoyable to see that that ni nice part usage that's not trying to scream at you, you know, it's just giving you a little something subtle there. Again, the uh, turbo lasers on top can be rotated around. You can also change the angles of their barrels up and down. This is nice being done all with tiles, so it's actual physical building there, as well as for the slight texture along the side here. And on this side, the blast doors are closed on the side hanger opening. Notice again how gaps are not a major issue anywhere that we've been looking, whether it's the interface between this angled section uh, along the, the ridge of the, the top of the hull, up to the superstructure itself, which is, you know, all that's built different ways and in, in different directions, very little gapping there. All this fits together nicely. You have two completely different sections of skin right here that come together perfectly, absolutely perfectly. And then you've got multiple layers on top here as well. Once again, you cannot open the main hangar bay doors here. As far as the design is concerned, they did try to take elements uh, in, intentionally from different versions, different uh, on-screen uh, interpretations of the Venator design from animated to the uh, you know, Revenge of, of the Sith, but this one obviously takes on the, the primary design that we've seen the most of going for the full length hangar bay doors, just again, with no option to open them up. It would have been nice to, to have that sliding there, to have some sort of interactive feature with this. Like I, like I mentioned before, there isn't really anything that you can do with this beyond looking at it, turning the little turbo lasers a little bit, and that's it. I do think that these turbo laser cannons are depicted just a little bit too large on this model though. Otherwise, everything is pretty consistent proportion-wise from stern to bow. I can pretty much extend that praise to the underside as well with very little gapping, even in the areas that you're almost never going to be seeing once this is actually built up. And it does rely primarily on uh, genuine color, you know, color in the plastics in, in the parts to create the major shapes. You do have a suggestion of the, the underside uh, hanger opening for bigger ships to come in. Uh, and the markings over here are done with tiles. It's just from most normal angles, you're not gonna be seeing most of that. Probably what I personally like the least on this ship is the stand design. It's just so plain and it looks so lanky. Although it is strong and it's specifically designed to be fully integrated into the frame. It's kind of a good thing, but also kind of a bad thing. First of all, you know, it's nice to have not a lot of focus on the stand, but it just looks extra, extra skinny to me. And also if you want to remove these and you know do your own stand or just pick it up and kind of fly the thing around, uh, good luck. They're, they're attached quite well into the mainframe. Again, the set includes one of these and the plaques are still printed. I don't think they're ever gonna go back to putting those on stickers again, hopefully. Perhaps at some point in the future, they'll change out the mold for the, the tile here, the eight by 16 to remove the dimple, the injection point from the center. It, 
bothers a lot of people. It doesn't bother me personally that much because it doesn't really do all that much, but the print quality here is pretty good. And additionally, this set comes with the Clone Wars 20th anniversary. This is a, uh, a print as well, just a single brick there, not the Clone Wars that most people are familiar with and, and like. And then the figures over here just stand on a plain uh, plate. They don't even have anything to you know, kind of make them stand out. So that, that's a little, a little boring, but it's fine. This Admiral Ularan figure, I think will probably remain completely exclusive to this set. And I think it's a pretty good human, well, Legoification of a humanification of the Clone Wars animated, uh, you know, model that they had for him. Yeah, I think it looks quite good. I'm, I'm happy with that. Got the dual molded legs there as well, which a lot of officers should definitely have. And just generally, it's a pretty good looking figure. Even if it's not super, super, super highly desirable, I think it will be pretty collectible. And then the Rex, my honest first impressions of, of the Rex were of uh, surprise, positive surprise. Because, you know, as, as is normally the case these days with anything related to Star Wars and especially figures, there's nothing but negativity out there in the world about it. And it's so, 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 so thick. Um, I, even myself, I was expecting to have a lot of issues with this, but I, I don't. Um, like I said, first impression was very, very positive. I'm like, wow, this is, this is actually, this is actually quite nice. Uh, that said... It is missing one thing for sure, printing on the side of the leg. The comma here should be printed around to the side. I can do without dual molding as long as there, there's print here. I can do without a cloth piece as long as there's print here. It's just, it just doesn't quite look right to me. And, and, and they said, you know, cloth uh, comma piece makes it more difficult for a figure to, to sit in a seat and everything, which I agree with completely. Those things are a pain in the butt. To, to deal with if you're not a collector and you're somebody who's actually going to be playing with these toys. Although, obviously, this is not intended to be a toy here. A $650 collector model is not a toy, but this is just a figure, and it's it's a it's a normal figure from them. The pauldron piece is nice, that cloth right there. I do not expect Rex to remain exclusive for very long. I think that they'll probably change one thing out, maybe the arm print, Maybe even just the head. This one has an exclusive head underneath it there, which is appropriate and good and well done. No alternate face is required for this, but just generally, yeah, I have a very positive Im impression of this figure, having just built it myself and seen it, you know, without thinking too far, without worrying about what anybody else thinks, just myself. I like it. It just definitely did need, especially for this higher end set, especially, but honestly for all, a print along the side of the leg. That's it. Leftover parts include a bunch of the extra helmet accessory pieces from that pack that's always the, the same, but you've only used one piece from there. And the rest of this stuff is pretty relatively mundane, especially for such a large set and such a special one. But the sticker sheet has only six items on it. They're very large. Again, the price of this was $650 US. It is 650 euros, 560 pounds UK, 850 Canadian dollars, which is approximately 525, so 625 US dollars, a little bit less than, than the American price. For 5,374 pieces, and the thing is 43 inches or 100 and just under 110 centimeters long. Does it feel like I got a good deal here? Does this feel like a good value? Feels like an okay value to me. There are a number of ways for me to really approach the the value, um, the value question with this. Number one, do I feel like this is six hundred fifty dollars worth of plastic? Absolutely not. Do I think that this is six hundred fifty dollars worth of premium plastic? You know, Lego plastic. Still no. I would like to see this at about five hundred. That's about where I'm at. And that, that, that's still a lot. That half a grand is still a lot of money. A lot of money. This is absolutely a high luxury item in, in, in my view, the way that I look at it. But I could see it being 500 in Lego in 2023 to 2024. Uh, I, I couldn't see them selling this much stuff for 400. I think that if it looked like this, but was less solid 
then 400 is something that I could I could see myself asking for. But there, when you pick this up, when you build it, when you pick it up, you know that there's quite a lot that went into this. I didn't, I wasn't able from the, the other studio to really show you what this looks like from the underside. Hopefully I don't do any damage here. Oh, I just knocked off the uh, the side turbo, turbo laser cannons. And I'll, I'll pick those up, but that's what it looks like from the underside. So you can see the, the detailing a little bit better. There's a good amount of detailing on the, on the, the ventral aft portion of it with uh, that's over here with the uh, uh, roller coaster tracks going through it as well but there's something here it's not just a skin over a small skeleton speaking of which let me tell you about the the build experience and how this how this went together you know i'll pick that up later on you can still see a good one over there this is built on a technic brick frame not technic uh, lift arm frame technic brick frame that initially looks like a Zweihander, like a, you know, big old sword with multiple cross guards on it. It looks exactly like, like that. And it feels like it's a nice, strong skeleton to build off of. And then of course you build adapters and then start adding on major plates of, of assemblies of skin onto that. And of course the superstructure is, is thicker than that and not just plate wise construction, a lot of, a lot of bricks in here stick the engines on the ends and all that but that's basically how it's built and it didn't feel super special to me personally nothing along the way blew me away the closest the closest to it being just seeing these gaps right here or the lack thereof just how some of these sections that are at different angles that are off grid come together and and fit just right it's some simple but well executed little techniques to place the connection points where they need to be to pull that off it was satisfying to get the greebling done although there's quite a quite a lot of work involved in it and now that it is done it does feel sturdy enough i feel comfortable lifting it up as a matter of fact i don't think you're supposed to do this but many times while building this i was yeah you're definitely not supposed to do this but while building it i would lift it up by one hand just to to bring it back to the to this main desk to, to add some major assemblies onto it. And then I'd shift it off to another desk while I was building it live over on Twitch. So it definitely has enough strength in it. I'm not worried about it collapsing the way that the original ISD did. That was a real shame. And Lego is understandably very, very embarrassed at the, uh, the terrible long-term durability of the original ISD that would just completely destroy itself simply sitting there no fault of the environment no fault of the builders it's just the way that it was was designed poorly um, and they just didn't know at that time you know they hadn't done a lot of a lot of big sets big heavy sets at, at that point that were going to be sticking around on display for years and years and years this does feel a little bit more like the superstar destroyer back there um but the Superstar Destroyer doesn't have this much width and doesn't have this much bulk over, overall. I feel like the Stu Superstar Destroyer, I feel more comfortable just picking up and kind of tossing around. It's a smaller thing, it's, it's lighter in weight. This I feel confident moving around, which is important to me. It's really, really important. Also, this having the shape that it does, it can be displayed in some places like that on half height. Uh, bookcases and that sort of furniture that doesn't have a tremendous amount of depth to it. You compare that to the uh, the gunship, you know, the UCS gunship that's large in multiple dimensions and, and awkward in its shape and everything. This is a lot easier, I think, to own than many of the many of the others that they've that they've done. But overall, I, yeah, I would really like to see it at 500. If you look at this and you like what you see and you think that it's worth 650, I'm not going to fight you on that. I'm not going to say, come on, come on, open your eyes. Nah, that's okay. You know, beauty's in the eye of the, of the be beholder. Value is to some extent as well, but I'm still going to give my thoughts on what I think is possible and what I know is possible by looking outside of the world of Lego. I know I'm not supposed to do that. I'm supposed to only worship the altar of Lego, everything is Lego, everything Lego is good, or everything Lego is terrible, whichever, yeah, you gotta pick a lane there. I, I don't pick a lane <laughs> between those. I, I, I stay flexible and I try to evaluate each product for what I see, for what's here, 
and also evaluate Lego relative to the rest of the toy and collectible market and just materials and everything like that. And you could definitely get some, you definitely should be able to get this much display value for a lot less in plastic with higher quality. The build experience here was fine <laughs> again, but not great. It was not something that added a tremendous amount of value to it for me. If I could change one thing, it would really be the stands. I would love for the stands to, to just be a little bit more elegant, especially the front one is just so skeletal and just has uh, not even any coverage over the, the Technic hole, Technic uh, uh, hole, yeah, the brick holes there with that single beam. It's not cute. And then being able to remove the stands, remove this from the stands the way that we could, or some, maybe not exactly like we could with the the Superstar Destroyer, but you know, being able to open up easily a couple of the panels, pull a couple of pins out. You can do that at the front, but you can't do it at, at the rear. And I think having that, having the option to take it off and to just swish it around, sans stands would have been really nice and being able to switch it over more easily to custom stand solutions, I think would have been much nicer. Those are my thoughts overall. I hope that you enjoyed looking at this, hearing about it from one person's perspective, you know, take my opinions with a grain of salt. Of course, I hope that I helped to give you just some general idea, not a, not focusing just on, well, here you have a two by two and here you have technically a one millimeter discrepancy between where the bridge should be, but rather just kind of talking about the you know, the overall experience of this thing. And if you want to see more content like this, well, you're in the right place. Hopefully you're, you're followed up or subscribed here. And if you'd like to see things like this being built in real time with a really, 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 really good, warm and fun and enjoyable, mostly mature community. And we get silly, but you know, it's, it's not, uh, um, uh, it's not, uh, childlike over there i'd say it's the it's the the good kind of immaturity that that sometimes pops up of people just having fun in a in a wholesome community uh, definitely consider giving me a follow over on twitch we've got a lot of folks who've come over from the youtube side who are very very comfortable there many of whom were pretty apprehensive about twitch you know, twitch is a twitchy place right and it's all about gaming it's all about Fortnite and stuff no it's not actually you have a really strong makers and crafting community. And thanks to y'all folks here over the past couple of years, we've been bringing a lot of folks over, a lot more folks over from the YouTube side and filtering some of the best, uh, the best community, the best people over there as far as the, the viewer and chatter community is concerned. So thank you very much for your support. I will talk to you again soon. Bye for now.